Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's really uh, inspiring to see a packed house this morning um, for um, breakfast, VC Breakfast Club on Sea Tree. Uh, for those of us uh, who are joining for the first time, um, I want to say a couple words about kind of like the, the VC uh, Breakfast Club and iAngels. So iAngels is, uh, is a VC fund uh, that specializes in investments in uh, startups in Israel. Um, we have uh, uh, in, the, in the room many of our representatives. You can pick up your hands uh, for people who want to uh, learn more about C-Tree and other opportunities to invest through iAngels in, in interesting startups in Israel. Um, in the VC blockchain uh, expert series, we aim to bring uh, every month or so uh, an expert in in an in a interesting space or one of our portfolio companies to share some of his insight about uh, an industry, about a uh, technology, about a solution. Um, and uh, and today with us we have uh, Israel Talpaz, the CEO of uh, C-Tree. Um, iAngels is invested in, in C-Tree and uh, we're very happy about this collaboration. Um, and we'll hear a little bit more from him. But first, we wanted to maybe um, kick off with a uh, with video. So your trees, they're magnificent. But how well do you actually know them individually? Meet C-Tree, the intelligence network for trees. Gain insight into the health and productivity of your trees. We combine data from our machine learning algorithm with boots on the ground to help you optimize your farming operations. Let's work together and make better agronomic decisions to increase the profitability of your farm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, how about we take a second so to kind of like set the stage. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and about C-Tree. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see everybody. Um, I, uh, in short, I'm 54 now. And uh, two years ago, I retired for 33 years in the Israeli defense community, uh, leaving the defense. I specialized in operations and intelligence, and uh, leaving that that community, uh, I wanted to uh, do something totally different on the one hand, but utilize uh, experience and capabilities that I was part of and bring into a new uh, new field uh, some of that experience. And I tapped into family background in agriculture um, and uh, hooked up with two of my co-founders, uh, uh, or three founders of, of uh, C3, uh, one more focused on technology, one more on the business side, and myself. And together we, uh, we decided to build an intelligence network uh, on trees, okay, uh, with with the goal of of basically transforming and optimizing permanent crop farming with intelligence for every single tree, for millions of trees over time, all over the world, different crops, but bringing bringing farmers that were uh, up till now very analog. Uh, not digital at all, um, new capabilities that the world can, can provide today um, and really transform uh, permanent crop farming as, as that. Excellent. So tell us, how do you do that? Okay, b basically what we do, this is an intelligence campaign that we that we run for um, as an end-to-end -end service to, to the farmers. Basically, we, we collect uh, data uh, with various means, first and foremost, drones, as you saw here. Drones are an uh, uh, aerial uh, imagery of, of a multispectral uh, 
of, of different sorts, thermal and so on. And, and that is our first gathering uh, capability that enables us to uh, basically make each tree uh, an entity that can be monitored now on a large scale, okay? And that is the first, like the general doctor capabilities that we bring over the trees, enables us to categorize them, to, to see the, the stress signs, um, score them. We have, we've developed our own scoring, uh, health scoring system where we uh, uh, categorize each and every tree. And that's, that's from the top layer. The second layer is the ground layer. And, and we go on ground to specific areas based on what we found in the air. And then we even uh, enhance that with below ground capabilities, meaning taking samples, uh, administering different sensors. Um, again, based on what we gathered up to that, to that point. And at the end, the farmer gets his whole plantation uh, digitized and sent every, uh, basically every month. Uh, we, we come back and we do it and we continue this. This is an ongoing uh, service. It's not a one-time thing. And, and the farmers can now, in, in a second, understand what's going on in their field. Is there what's going on in the, in the field in the tree level? At the per tree level, every single tree. Uh, they, they don't usually deal with every single tree, but they deal with clusters and, and they can deal with specific problems from specific to the major, uh, the whole range. I think this is, this is very important to understand because I think generally, you know, the agri tech, uh, uh, space has enjoyed a lot of uh, traction and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people are talking about what's going on in the last decade, I think, in precision agriculture, as you said, is something that's been around for maybe 20 years. 20 years. Um, now, I think the the interesting element or like the the change in thought is really how do we take something that has not been uh, catered to by the precision agriculture uh, theme in high yield crops and how do we take, you know, a lot of best practices about how do, do we recognize things that are happening at the tree level, um, and apply it to, to, uh, a new space? Yes. I, I'll, I'll emphasize two points here that are, I think, makes us a bit different than what, what you can uh, see in other places. One is our focus on trees. Uh, most, most innovation and most, uh, companies and, and what you're seeing in precision agriculture is geared to row crops, field crops, uh, or greenhouses, uh, where it's, it's much more uniform, um, and huge scale of, of areas. You can utilize satellites. You can use plane based aerial imagery. Uh, you can, you can do that. Uh, trees, you can't do that. You need the very, very high resolution. You need multiple views to, to capture each tree in, in the accurate way. You need, uh, a system that is based on different types of sensors, not only aerial. We're not an aerial imagery company. We're a full, uh, a full package, uh, company and, and providing that package on trees is difficult on the one hand and but it's really rewarding because uh, trees live on for 20, 30, 40 years. They're, they're uh, production units. They have inputs every year. They have outputs every year. You need to measure that. Uh, imagine a factory today that has a million production units that nobody's monitoring each production unit. Okay? You don't see that in industry. In farms, that's what's happening. Okay, And we're enabling the measurement and the monitoring inputs and outputs, we also measure the, the fruit on the tree. Okay, it's part of our metrics. So we're enabling that in huge farms. That's what, what we're gearing: huge farms uh, with uh, millions of trees um, in in uh, an affordable way. Okay. So how do so all of a sudden you take a farm that has uh, been maybe analog or hasn't had uh, uh, kind of like a tech partner, and all of a sudden you introduced 
introduce uh, huge amounts of data. Now, this is happening also in, in other sectors as well with in, in the ground sensors, uh, over the ground, IoT devices, tablets, solutions, platforms, uh, integration of uh, different solutions and platforms. So there's huge amounts of data to be analyzed um, and to make sense of. So what, what, what is that experience like for, for the farmers that you work with? The farmers up to basically, again, permanent crop, it's, it's very different from other, other crops and other types of, of farming. But in permanent crops, they haven't had one, one shop, one place that would uh, supply them their data. Okay, they would, they could buy uh, logistics uh, uh, software or uh, smart tractors, um, even sensors, weather stations, and so on. But they didn't have basically anything that would monitor their trees. That's the main, the, the trees and the fruit. That's their main. Focus, okay. That was out of the scope, and and they didn't have one system that integrated all of their uh, data, and that's that's basically what what we're doing, uh, integrating the whole thing, uh, and based on the single tree and upwards, and providing that with uh, providing them with a service that really feeds them everything. We're not asking them to do anything here, meaning. Uh, they don't fly the drones. They don't uh, look at the sensors. We do the analysis. Okay, I've uh, we we conducted a lot of research with farmers. Farmers told me, look, the sensors are nice, but the but was a sensor. You put one for every ten thousand, twenty thousand trees. How relevant is that sensor by itself? Not not relevant. But if it's part of our system, like our system, it becomes relevant. But to calibrate, everything is integrated in one thing. Another problem that they had is that the sensor would send us graphs. We see graphs. I'd come at home at night after a long day in the farm, uh, start analyzing graphs. What 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 can I do with it? Or I get aerial imagery from some source. I can I I now need to start analyzing that. They have no tools to do that. Okay, they have no time to do that. And it didn't pass the critical mass of value to to make them jump on it, okay? And that's why precision agriculture for uh, permanent crops has been really gradually trickling up, but not winning the market. Okay? And um, and that's why that's our our concept is to is to build that package to to enable that. Okay? And we're and we're fortunately we, we're getting good. Uh, feedback from the farmers regarding this. The way that I see it, I think in the last few years there's been significant technological advancement in um, computer vision and the ability to even collect that kind of uh, uh, sample and analyze it and uh, coupling it with machine learning capabilities and um, uh, the real analysis of huge amounts of data makes it now relevant more than ever before um, as a technological solution. But can you share with us maybe what is that kind of like a pivotal moment? Um, is it the technology? Is it the timing? What makes it now the right time uh, for this solution for it to be able to be a winner? So, uh, um, that's a, that's a, a tough question, but but I, I think uh, we feel it and we and we see it. I think that the, the th there are three, three or maybe four elements that converge now that make it possible that you couldn't do that seven years ago or, or ten years ago. One is, as you said, is the is the machine learning as more of um, I wouldn't say that it's now a, a common place, but it's it's becoming very very useful, very uh, reachable, accessible. Um, and we have a great team that, that trans, uh, the whole team came from different areas, but we have a great computer vision, uh, machine learning team that came from Mobileye. Right? The guys that came out of Mobileye, 13 years there, led the, the, the computer vision, machine learning capabilities there, and, and joined us. We're fortunate with that. And, and we're doing that in, in, on trees, what they did in cars. Okay, and everybody knows what Mobileye did. 
Um, so that's number one component. You couldn't analyze the amount of data that we have, that we collect every day on trees. You couldn't do that without strong machine learning capability. Just couldn't be done. Drones, drones are, have been around and, but I'd say drones and basically the cameras on drones. The, the fact that they've become much better, much cheaper, more accessible, um, and we can scale scale them like uh, w w in big amounts, easily and cheap, affordably. That that's another part. I, the third part I'd say is the cloud platforms. Cloud platforms without the cloud platforms being as they are today, uh, accessible. Um, affordable, uh, strong enough. Without these, uh, you couldn't do all of this. And I'd add our own element of the concept. Without seeing a campaign type of concept, being bringing the whole package in, not just one element, okay? Uh, that's our unique uh, um, way of thinking. Uh, I don't think that it could be done, okay? I think that you, these four elements together um, are, are what's making it possible now to, to do it. I think um, thinking about Israelis and how like we need to deal with agri-tech in general, like for us it's always been natural to innovate in the space because we don't have a lot of room. So we can't like, we have don't have maybe 60 hectares of yeah. just like area to, to farm in and we're very concerned with water and resources in general. So for us like to talk about innovation in the space seems natural. Do you think that this is indeed the case? Like th that there is a benefit in the Israeli mindset and how we approach precision agriculture that makes us uh, better at this? And if I take it one step further, with your kind of training and background, how does that play in as well uh, as part of the Israeli story and abilities and uh, see trees unique uh, you know, competitive advantage. Great. Okay. So Israel has, I think, two big advantages in this. One is the agriculture base. The agriculture base is strong. The the know-how in agriculture um, and and the uh, innovation in agriculture and and those components are still around. Okay, very much so. Uh, that and we tap into that very, very strongly. We have experts in the different crops, and without those experts, you can't do anything. Okay, you need to understand the crops. That's the first step, uh, and then build the, the what needs to be measured there, what needs to be monitored, and then the solutions come and, and so on. But the first base is having a strong uh, expert know-how in agriculture, and we have that in Israel, and that's. That's uh, uh, the first advantage. And the second is exactly what you described, our way of thinking and the fact that we uh, were not afraid to uh, tackle uh, big issues, uh, even complex ones, and, and, and take them apart, try to take them apart, uh, and bring in different types of capabilities. Okay, what, what, One of the biggest challenges that, that we had in the beginning were that everybody was telling us, well, pick one thing to do. Pick one thing, one sensor. Sense one thing. Everybody was telling us this, and everybody was telling us, uh, well, we're not going to, you're not focused enough. Okay? Um, and, and if just do one, one thing, and, and we, we had to explain and then do, uh, that one sensor is just not good enough for a complex problem. Like, it's not good enough. It doesn't give the farmer still stuck with some particle of information, good as it can be, but it's just not good enough. It doesn't do it. It doesn't handle the issue. You need to you need to tackle the issue and encompass it, okay? Uh, to give him value, to give the farmers uh, value that past the critical mass that make a difference, okay? And and the fact that we stuck with that. On the one hand, the fact that we could bring in different capabilities from the Israeli market, Israeli technology, um, that that's a, a huge enabler. So Israel is is a 
strong part of that. Something personal, my background is is exactly gets me ready for this, okay, this type of of uh, uh, challenge, a complex challenge, uh, not one sensor that is relevant to handle something like that. Um, it's and and be able to to deal with that. That's that's my experience. How to how to deal with issues like this. Uh, so that got me ready for this. And and I had another secret advantage, and that is the human resources coming out of the Israeli uh, defense community that I'm very well connected to and know very a lot of people there. Uh, that helps in getting good, great, I'd say, a great team together. Um, from the different side, technology, operational um, intelligence, and all of that, and it doesn't matter that it's in farming. Okay, it's, it's great. Similar people. skill sets. Exactly, skill sets. Get good farmers or, or agronomists on board, and you have the full package. And that's that's what we that's what we're trying to. Now, until now, we we're talking about permanent crops, but you're really the first uh, crop that you decided to tackle is the is citrus. Right. I remember when we sat, when we first sat, um, and uh, the first video that I saw of uh, citrus was not this uh, beautiful video. It was uh, the previous one that depicted a, uh, a very, very problematic uh, situation with the citrus industry, uh, with the greening disease, and really the uh, wiping out of uh, significant parts of the industry in uh, the U.S. and in different parts of the world. Um, and that, that really kind of like shook, took me by surprise because I think people are not part of that, uh, ecosystem or not necessarily aware of it. Israel has been, uh, known as an exporter of, uh, of citrus to Europe and to other places. Um, but this has become a real epidemic globally. Right. And this was the, the kind of like first thing that you guys wanted to tackle, right. uh, and solve. So maybe we can yeah. talk a little bit about that because I think, it's a segue to talk about the different kinds of crops that you guys can um, uh, cater to, yeah. and then different regions and, and different breadth of services or suite of services. So what what got got us really started was the case that that more just uh, described. Citrus greening uh, or HLB is is uh, is a devastating disease. It's a bacteria. That affects citrus all over the world. It's a bacteria with, that has no cure, far from being cured. Uh, no uh, uh, vaccination, no uh, no treatment for that. And that it sounds it, it, to me in my bread it, in my head it's almost like uh, as best. It's like you need to contain it and get rid of it, yeah, and yeah. you can't do anything with it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's. It, it's transmitted with a vector that's a small, like mosquito-type uh, insect, like malaria. And it, once it it, it it lays its eggs in the tree, citrus tree, the citrus tree is doomed. Will die in two, three years. And uh, those young uh, eggs become new insects that jump to another tree, and it's contagious this way. And it devastated 80% of Florida citrus. 80% of Florida citrus is gone. Okay, Florida now is only 20% of what it was in 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 a, in a decade. Okay, Brazil is fighting this. Fortunately, we don't have it in Israel yet, but it's it's moving. It's it originated in China, in in India as well, and it's it's all over now. This got us started because we uh, when we started we asked what is the biggest problem. We asked the Volcani Institute researchers uh, team that we got together and asked them, what is the biggest problem that you know in crops today? And one of the researchers said, greening, citrus greening. Have a look at that big, huge problem. Now, uh, what, what they're doing to that is because there's no cures, and of course there's a lot of funding going into genetics and trying to find cures and all that, that's going to take some luck probably and time to, to do. Uh, but what's done today, you need early detection, very strong detection and accurate detection capabilities to be able to get the trees as soon as possible, detect it, and eradicate the trees from there. That's the way you can contain 
contain the disease and manage that and, and survive and survive and, and keep going very strong and not be wiped out like Florida and parts of Brazil were. Um, so, and, and we saw what they were doing. The way they were detecting was having field scouts drive on tractors, looking at the top part of the trees, um, for the signs because the, the initial signs are there. And we saw pictures of a platform like that. And you can understand where, where I'm going with this. Okay. Let's get a drone over there and start doing it, uh, with drones and special imagery. We should be able to do it much better than a human eye. That was our assumption. And that's how we got it, uh, got it going. And, and that's working. Okay. That's what we're doing right now in Brazil. California doesn't have it yet. So in California, we're not providing that part of, of the service, but it's, it is it's integral part of our service because we're monitoring every single tree at a very, very high resolution. It's in there. It's in there. We'll detect the first signs of weakness and we'll go there and pretty soon, uh, get every, every, the whole system, uh, on top of that. And Brazil, Brazil love it because we, we're changing uh, the way they can put aside the ground scouts and use the drones, use our service, and get that feature up and running immediately, give them a, a strong uh, weapon to deal with that, uh, with that disease, uh, plus getting the whole optimization capabilities that we're providing. So for them, it's a very strong package. That's why they're moving very aggressively with us. I think it's really interesting to understand that you know, like you like you said before, that each tree is a production unit. Each tree, because it's uh, permanent crops, has lifetime value. Everything is really monetized to the unit, and these are real huge businesses. It's not just like you know what we maybe like to romantically think of as farms or farming. These are real businesses that know to track the dollar value per production unit. So hurting that specific production unit has implication on, on the bottom line. How much are farmers concerned with the fear factor of having their business shrink versus having their margins grow or potential new business come in? Okay. So first and foremost is the fear factor. Okay. Farmers want to be guarded by uh, crop loss, from crop loss. They, they want to detect disease. They want to detect water stress nutrient stress, uh, there are many diseases, unfortunately, in the different crops, and that's the first and foremost thing that they want, okay, because that can, in permanent crops, you don't lose a, a, a crop for a year. If you lose a tree, it takes five years on average to replace that tree, okay, to have a new tree to produce fruit, it takes five years. The farm can be wiped out, and I'm talking about big farms, organizations, not Talking about multi hundred million uh, farms, uh, dollar farms, up to a uh, billion dollar farms, right? Um, and there are a lot of these. That, that's the trend in farming now: it's consolidation and bigger, bigger entities. And and these farmers can just be wiped out, okay? So that's their number one. But number two is is the profits, of course. Okay, the margins are not are not strong. They can be very weak. They're fluctuating. And the day when they, they, they still rely on, they do what they do in, in an average and basic uh, way and they pray for a good year. Okay. They have no or very limited way to control what's going on during the, the growing season. Okay. It's, it's given what comes out at the end of the year. We're hoping that it's going to be good. Um, and we try to influence the year. Okay, and, and of course, over time, more and more years, um, by treating the specifics. And the, and again, devil and God are in the details here. Okay, meaning you need you need to be able to to touch the trees and talk about the trees, and not blocks, huge blocks that are are too general, and too varied. There's always different soil, different topography, different varieties. All of that, you need to be able to go into uh, into the blocks and, and touch the trees. They call it, we didn't 
coined this term, but but they called it subatomic farming. That, that's what they call what they're doing now with us. We like that uh, because it's the atom. They they regarded the atom is as a block. Block uh, in the U.S. is 40 acres, um, and uh, that's 160 uh, dunams or 16 hectares. In Brazil, it's about 40 hectares. Okay, that's the minimum up till now. Now we're going in, we're going in in deep, and and of course the goal is optimization. Okay, getting more out of each tree. That's the way that we could meet the the, the demand for food. Okay, just getting more. We're not going to get more land. We're not going to get more water, more people, more resources. We're going to need to get more out of each tree. That's the vision behind what we're what we're doing. So let's talk about. Exactly that about the the breadth of solutions we started talking about before suite of solutions. Um, what other crops you're looking at? Where you are today in terms of uh, locations in the world and customer sites and and yeah. kind of like that initial traction. So we we're expanding in uh, in a few tracks, a few vectors. Let's say uh, one is geography. Um, and and we started with California. That was our initial, and that we we set up the business there, and the the product there, and um, and then we moved to Brazil, um, and now we've added Indonesia to our uh, uh, customer base, um, and and we're holding back, pretty much holding back requests to work in other areas, in Latin America, Chile, Argentina. Mexico um, and Florida, get to Florida, uh, other places in Southeast Asia um, are are requesting. Okay, we we have no salesmen yet in the company. Right, the good thing is word of mouth. We have forty people. We have forty people um, and no uh, no salesmen. Well, I'm doing sales, but but uh, we have no sales apparatus at this point. It's, everything is word of mouth. Um, and we just got, got out of stealth mode now, that few weeks, um, because uh, so now we we didn't need that. Okay, we need to be able to to control our growth. So so we're expanding geography wise. Second expansion uh, vector is crops, and we were worried of how how much time it will take us to add a new crop to our service. How much time would it take to learn? Uh, Almonds and add them. Almonds are very strong in California. Huge. Most of our growers grow citrus and almonds, and five times more almonds than citrus. We chose citrus because of the disease. Okay. We wanted to deal with that. But now we're moving into almonds. In in a month, our first uh, trial will run on almonds. We've done the adjustment uh, here. We have good experts in Israel as well, and and we we've. we've uh, Collected data of almonds in the past half year, and we'll start now um, in almonds. But it, Indonesia is very interesting because there we're dealing with palms, oil palms, and uh, we were worried. And we told the customer; the customer asked us to pressed us to to get there as soon as possible. And I said, "Wait, we need to learn what is a palm." Uh, before we can, uh, and, and we decided due to the pressure there uh, to learn it with them. Okay, and we arrived there a few weeks ago, and it's 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 working. It's already working. Meaning, look, the concepts are 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 similar. A plant is a plant, and green on a plant is good. Yellow signs are not good for all plants, and dryness is not good. They all need. Uh, uh, water, they need nutrients, they have disease. It's now, I call it tweaking our um, our muscles, uh, tweaking our, uh, our twins, the same equipment, uh, but we're, we're tweaking that and we're learning the, the crop with them, with agronomists, it, it, it can be fast. It takes, I would say, an average for now, between weeks to a few months, to add a new crop to our uh, capability. And on our roadmap now is, is almonds, avocados, palms, uh, going in, grapes are are next. Everything we're doing is due to our customer base. So they're they're pressing us to do that. And I'm I'm putting more 
priority to that, uh, meeting the customer, uh, the actual customers <laughs> that we already have, let's get them growing, and, and of course we'll get new customers as we go along, um, but that, that's giving the priority here, picking the new crops and going, and going forward. Okay. How many customers do you now have? We have uh, about 16 worldwide customers, uh, most in California, uh, eight in, in California, and then in Brazil, and one in uh, Indonesia. But counting them this way is, is uh, can be misleading because the one in Indonesia is huge, okay, 150,000 hectares, okay, so a million point five dunams. Yeah. Huge. It's a huge business, uh, and 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 with this one, we want to uh, expand all over there. That's just an example. Maybe maybe the metric, by the way, should be uh, hectares yeah. or thousands of hectares. Yeah. The the metric is hectares for us now, and we're not we we stop counting uh, customers because me, uh, hectares is more important. Actually, the metric should be business because. Uh, we, we're coming in with new packages uh, as we're going wide. We're also going in depth, meaning uh, the fruit issue is huge. Being able to count the yield on the trees is very, very critical. And being able to connect the yield to the fruit, to the uh, health of the trees, is very important. Because then, then you know exactly how, where to go, where to push more. Um, and that's a new package that's coming out. We, we performed the trials in California and in July we will uh, sell this. This is being sold now, this new uh, fruit assessment package. Um, so, and we'll introduce that into in Brazil as well. So that's a, another way. So we'll start counting the business side, but business hectares and then customers, that's that's the, the, our metrics. So how hard was it to get to where you guys are at now, like in terms of Developing the solution, penetrating um, with the, the customers, with the farmers, um, and achieving kind of like that state of where you are right now. Very hard. Okay. Very, very hard. How uh, long did it take? It, uh, we, we formed the company in July uh, 17, 2017. Um, we were incubating about half a year before that. Um, and since July... 17. That was we received the seed money in August, and uh, a year exactly a year after that was Series A. That was last August, and now we, that was an extended round, uh, which closed right now. So uh, in a year and a half, we did uh, we did that. We're very happy with this, of course, and, and fortunate. But it's it's tough, and we still have a long way to go. Okay, we still have a long way to go. The biggest challenge that I see, I see, I see two challenges, uh, major challenges going forward. One is getting the farmers to implement, meaning use the the uh, information to uh, optimize their uh, their production capabilities, and that's changing the way they farm. Okay, they like it, meaning they they uh, they love the information, but if they don't act on the information. Which is sometimes hard to do, um, then the bottom line will stay the same. Okay? If you just see the information and you don't act, you're not going to improve. So getting them to act, and we're we're actually helping them implement. Okay, uh, with our boots on the ground. As as I didn't mention this much, but we have boots on the ground in in, in the different areas to fly the drones and to collect the data and and upload everything. So we use the, these boots on the ground to engage the farmers as well and help them in the implementation. We don't do the big farming uh, activities, of course, but we guide them with that and we provide them with professional services uh, to help them with that, meaning specialized drip irrigation that we use these well we know how. And other capabilities uh, connecting them to, to, to do that. And that's, that's the number one challenge, the implementation. And the second one is managing correctly the scale, the growth and scale with the quality, meaning we, don't, we cannot dilute ourselves too much, spread ourselves too thin, 
to a point where we we don't meet the quality level that we we have to we have to stick because then we lose credibility. Credibility is number one here with farmers. It's probably in all business, but but here with farmers it's crucial. They have to be able to trust uh, our results, and they have to be consistent and 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 accurate. That's a big big challenge, and we're putting a, that's the first and foremost uh, priority in in the company. Do that and scale. That's difficult. That's difficult, especially for a young uh, company. Um, and with limited resources, and that's and and managing that is is a big challenge. So I'll, these are the two challenges that. I so how do you meet the the scaling problem? Because obviously, because you have the boots on the ground element, and it's not like just a, a fully automated solution that's all going up to the cloud, analyzed with machine learning, and then the insight go back down. You literally have people who have to visit each customer site every month. Uh, also collect samples, etc. How how does that align with kind right. of like that scaling? Also inside the the actual uh, farmer because you want to expand and then own the entire farm. So is it going to be enough to have somebody visit once a month if you're managing uh, um, the the entire farm? Um, if it's not going to be part of the C tree team, do you lose some of that special sauce or Competitive uh, advantage, like how do you meet that uh, scaling challenge? Okay, so for we we've uh, recently established a customer. Uh, we established a, a U.S. entity. So today there's C3 U.S. and in C3 U.S. we have a customer success manager, a local uh, project manager, an agronomist that we that we hired. Very very capable uh, uh, guy that's really in line with our DNA. And and he is our constant uh, physical uh, uh, presence in in California, and uh, that's beside the, the the boots on the ground, the aerial uh, drone operators, the data collectors, and all of that. That that's another three man team. So so basically, we have constant four man team there in California, and we can address any customer need same day. Okay, that's. That's one. like driving all day across California to get to well, the customer. Well, the good thing about know. permanent crops, pro most crops, geography is with us, meaning the climate and geographical conditions condense the the crops. Meaning citrus is is, is together in in California in, in with a radius of about a three hour drive. You cover all of California citrus. Okay, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo state. Huge, but our radius there is about six, seven hours for a huge chunk of Brazilian citrus. Okay, uh, so it works. Geography works. Almonds are condensed. Avocados are condensed. So each in their own place. So we will have centers there of of uh, presence. Okay, customer manager, success manager, plus the drone and and data collectors. That's what we need. That's what we need, and that those are not big numbers. Um, and and as I said, I'm tapped into the Israeli uh, uh, ex defense uh, uh, market of human resources, meaning guys coming out, drone operators, air force, um, intelligence, and all of that. So and and again, word of mouth works well here, and and I we have. We're fortunate in having great resources on that side. Agronomists less here now than they used to be, but they're still we're still tapped in well with this community, and we we look to the uh, local agronomists all over, and, and that works very well teaming up that way. Um, so that that helps in that aspect. Uh, I would say the technology side also has to digest. Uh, the scale, the scale up. Okay, meaning the analysis. It's not only the data collection. I'd say the number one bottleneck now is technology. Meaning being able to assess so much, and and you know, uh, artificial intelligence it starts with uh, human intelligence and a lot of human intelligence. No artificial intelligence. It's only artificial intelligence. There's a huge component of, of HI teaching. Uh, 
Yeah, and and uh, and that's the bottleneck that we have right now. So we're pushing there uh, as well uh, to get that moving together. So so there, there's not one bottleneck that I can open and then we can just you know uh, go crazy all over. Uh, we need to constantly uh, move forward, but carefully. I want to take a few minutes to open uh, Q&A from the audience, and then I left a couple of questions for after. Great. So uh, let's take it. Yeah. What about the, uh, the satellite uh, pictures as a, as a competition? Okay. So I'm just going to repeat the question. So what about satellite um, imagery or uh, pictures as competition? Okay. Satellite imagery on permanent crops is not, is not doing the trick. Okay, it's not relevant. It's marginal in the in the value that it can bring. Uh, it's been tried before. I know satellites very well from my background, and I know the best there is and and stuff that isn't in market yet. Okay, so and I know the the the, the uh, limitations satellites have, but satellites we see satellites as an addition to our capabilities. That's what. We want to add this. It cannot be the, the uh, backbone of, of the service, but it could be a good uh, uh, supplement. Okay, it can complement the, the drones, basically on frequency and not on resolution. That's what we're. That's where we're going. Um, but I'm not worried about if just a satellite company comes in and tries to do that. I'm not worried about. It. They don't have the resolution needed for that. Don't give me an example that you know satellites can read uh, and numbers on uh, license, license plate. plates and all of that. True, close to that, not really, but but close to that. But satellite, show me a satellite that can do like that, that can comb field very carefully. Satellites can't do that. They they, they do it like that. Okay, and that's the big that's the biggest problem that that they have. Okay. So satellites are not as competition, they're good supplement. Okay? Yeah. Yes. What is the business model? Business model. Yeah. We charge the client per area per month. Okay? In the US it's per acre per month. And in Brazil it's per hectare per month. Basically a yearly contract. And that's it. That's it. The package you pay X amount. I understand that there are like real, um, like standard, uh, yes. models. So, um, easy, very, easy, very, simple. very simple, aligned with industry standards so that this is not a, uh, an inhibitor, right. uh, to, to take on the system. We're and the benefit is the, the fact that you have the uh, additional teams and additional resources. Yeah. We, we, um, uh, we're more expensive. Like a few dollars, right? Yeah. It's, we're more expensive. Much more expensive than aerial imagery. Regular aerial uh, imagery, of course, satellite imagery is much cheaper, and even other drone companies are cheaper than than ours. We're more expensive in that aspect, but we we bring in much more. Okay, and it takes us uh, it takes us uh, a, a trial, quick trial to sh convince the farmer. Meaning, we take our the way we start is by providing. Uh, Free trial. We provide a free a free trial on a, a small piece of land, like a hundred acres, and and we we demonstrate, we display what we do for a period of time, short period of time, and they make it. And after that, we ask them to make a decision, and it's on their trees, it's in their land, and usually they're surprised, okay, because they think they know their trees, and they then they see that they don't really. And that's what gets them to move forward. Okay? So the, the business model is... is what easy. is the conversion uh, from uh, pilot to paying customer? 90%. 90%. One, yeah. It's 90% conversion rate. Yeah. Yes. We had about this technology in agriculture uh, more than two years ago. What is your competitive advantages or weaknesses? Yeah, well... I think our competitive advantage is that we we bring uh, unique analysis capabilities on the imagery, very unique. OK? 
okay? You've heard the, the titles, but the, the details uh, you haven't seen, okay? Meaning the way we analyze each tree is unique. Nobody's done that. You haven't heard up till now. You're going to hear it now because we see competition do uh, do what or start saying what we're saying. But we have two years of that now on Head Start. Uh, you haven't seen that per tree. And the level of of, uh, of analysis that we have, that's one thing. And we have, it's patent pending. We have a few patent pending there, uh, IPs there. Uh, running there in the process that we in, that we score, we index, and so on. And another is the full package. Okay, full package. Uh, you've seen components. You've seen sensors. You've seen aerial. You've seen uh, you've seen software applications. We, we all of these comp as components. You haven't seen them in one uh, in one package uh, service end to end, and and so on. And that's what we do, okay? So I'd, I'd say from the details to the full package, unique, okay? Farmers, again, they they see that. I, I start, very, I have a very hard time in the beginning um, because farmers are tired of, of seeing uh, new salesmen or new, uh, of new technology. So what's new about you? This is what I'm getting. I used to get, I don't get that anymore now in California. But I used to get, okay, we've heard, Aerials, we've seen drones, we've seen that. What's new about you? After half an hour, they don't they don't ask that. Then they say, okay, I want to see what you're showing me now. I want to see it on my plate. Okay, that's the process. Okay. Yeah. Why Israel? I mean, your market is obviously the United States. Right. Or we, we, so don't supply don't, we don't supply here. We don't supply here. here. But why having the entire company here in the, okay. in the development teams? And okay. Everybody here and not. Well, we're strengthening our bases in in U.S., uh, Brazil, Far East, we're, and and we're we'll be very present there. The the analysis area is is really based. Okay, we want to keep that here. We want to keep the uh, the uh, you know the AI, the development, the software side, the system side. All of that is really is really uh, technology, and we like to keep it there. Okay, and and because we're all over the world, say U.S., but now we're in the Far East in, in Latin America. Why U.S.? Okay, um, we, we see this as a worldwide uh, company, and then once it's worldwide, let's put the center here in Israel. Let's keep it here, and. The, at least the center of analysis, okay, and develop. Not, yeah, the R&D, exactly. Not, not the business side. Business side, we have already one entity. Brazil is on its way. Indonesia, it's, it's going to be a different model that's being formed. So it's going to be these types of models. Uh, we plan to utilize many local teams, okay, for data collection. Next stage. We're teaching. We started teaching already in, in a place. Uh, and uh, they'll all go around with these shirts and with our standards um, of, of high quality collection because we cannot we cannot um, go in, uh, down in quality in that aspect. The good news is that we have control because each picture gets up to the cloud and we see it. So if they don't do a good job with the picture, then then we know that it's off track and they have to do it again and it's not good enough. So we do have a control. Over everything that's happening, but but we need to uh, utilize local teams. And today you have good drone operators, U.S. Easy, easy, Brazil Easy, and and uh, even in Indonesia we see we see that. So we we think that there's good potential teaching the locals, getting them on board, franchising this type, contracting this. They'll do data collection, upload it. Uh, we'll always have an Israeli presence there, at least for the business side, and then uh, that that'll enable us to to scale. Uh, yeah. Kind of taking the business model in Indonesia another level, um, with their 150,000 hectares, which I think you said, 
um, how many people are you anticipating needing to support that from C-Tree, as well as keeping the model, you know, being able to provide the service in one day, how many people, boots on the ground, how many drones is that? It's, it's a huge, huge amount of space. Great. Yes. So um, we're asked about specifically one farm, one cus potential customer that we described earlier had 160,000 uh, hectares. Um, the question was, how many people actually need to service that kind of client or customer? How many boots on the ground? How many drones? What kind of resources to even cater to that kind of size? Because it is monumental. It's it's going. Well, it's a tough question. And uh, I just Let's assuming the entire farm is uh, yeah. also uh, unloaded on to yeah. onboard on solution in full. Farmers don't move from zero to a hundred in in a second. Okay, they they take the okay. The trial was a hundred uh, acres or hectares. Then they take a thousand, then ten thousand, and then and then they move on. Put Brazil aside. Brazil is acting totally different because of the disease, so they don't want to play around. They want to move quickly. So Brazil is actually the most challenging for us in that aspect. But but going back to, to your question, uh, there are for a few tricks that we can incorporate here. Okay, uh, one is not doing it every month. Okay, and and we won't provide at least at the first stage uh, for every month in that area. Uh, two is uh, using um, multiple drones at the same time simultaneously. We're doing that already. Uh, and adding local teams. This is a 10-team ten, ten area. 10-team area. Okay? Um, and 10 teams, 20 people. Okay? It, it's doable. And, and they don't have to be all Israeli. Okay? We have time to, to do this. So we'll start Israeli-based and, and add on. Okay? So that's all of these factors go in and building the model, then I, I don't, I won't, if the, even if the customer says, give me now 150,000 hectares now, if that happens, he won't get that. I'll, we'll build a plan to, to scale up there over time, the trade off there. Okay. How much is time, by the way? I think, because it, it sounds long, but I think no, no, uh, it's, it's supposed to be. Okay. Months? Is a year is a year for 150 thousand? Is it long? It's not long. It's quick. Uh, could be in the negotiations. It'll be ha uh, less than half a year, nine months. But it'll be it'll take that that period of time to do that. Um, it's, it's zero time in, in agriculture. Okay, that's really fast uh, uh, adoption rate. So I, I I don't think we'll have that big of a problem. In most places, Brazil is going to be a challenge, and then we're trying to, to figure out how to do that. We, we may have a big mass of people coming in to, to tackle that. Okay. One last question. Yes. Okay, so first of all, I want to say I remember sitting at the DLB, super hot, very humid, talking to your partners about how you're going to launch it. I want to congratulate Mo and I just for knowing how to get in. Even back then, it wasn't available for single standing angels, so congrats. Um, I want to ask, you're, you're tackling right now only trees, permanent crops. Why did you choose permanent crops versus non-field crops? Permanent crops, uh, we saw a void, meaning nobody was there. Basically, very few were there, and not dealing with that type of farming, okay? Most ran to the field crops, the row crops, and all of that, and and we saw that opening, and and again everybody was telling me forget this is farming. Farming is field crops, greenhouses, permanent crops. Forget permanent crops. Go to field crops. I said wait, wait a second. There are a lot, a lot of, of permanent crops. A lot. It's huge. Worldwide, it's huge because you can add into that also. Don't need to add in, but you can add add into uh, uh, trees for forestry, for timber, uh, and and palms, as we said, and it's huge, huge amounts. It's a big uh, a source of food all over the world, and that was open. And there were big problems there, so we wanted to tackle that. And 
uh, it was complex enough to also give us the advantage, the the competitive advantage that nobody can, you know, come in with a satellite now and easily do do that. Or uh, it's it gives us a big uh, if you can do it well, then you you're you're there. You have a strong foothold. Now, are we looking at field crops or moving into other areas? Now we're not. Will we look in the future? I'm not saying no. Okay? I'm not saying no. We'll see if we have the advantage. I'm not sure we'll have the advantage. Okay? Uh, we will have some advantages, but I'm not sure that the whole, the whole range business-wise uh, will, will leave the competitive advantage with us over what, all of all of what's going on over there, maybe. I'm not saying no uh, now, but we, we have a lot on our plates. Okay. Okay. I want to bounce circle back to you. Um, something that we mentioned in, during the the conversation was about how you know the global population is growing significantly. We're not going to have more land. We're not going to have more water. We need to see how we do things more efficiently and increase the yield per tree or with the resources that we have at hand. I want to ask you, with everything that we covered, like the challenges, the scaling, the boots on the ground, the model, what keeps you up at night and what makes you convinced this is a billion dollar opportunity? A lot of stuff keeps me up. Um, Apart from being on planes. On planes. But no, I I'm worried about uh, customer, uh, I'd say, retention and growth, meaning uh, we need to have the customers embrace, change the way they're farming because it's that deep, okay? It's that deep. The price is huge if that happens, but uh, it has to happen. And it's happening, and it needs to continue to happen, meaning they need to, uh, to adopt it, implement, act on it, Go for. We need to be good enough to enable that. Okay, we know that that it has to it has to be accurate enough and consistent enough, so relevant. that they see the actual results. Yeah, they they need to see the results. They they check the results not with by our accuracy that which they do check, and it, it, it's working. It's very easy to check. Okay, they go out in the field with our app, and they see is it right or not. And 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 that's a tough test. Okay, it's immediate. Uh, so, but that's not our test. Our test is that at the end of the year, after they've used C tree, the return on the investment that they put by paying C tree is worth their what? Okay, meaning they they've received more money, uh, twice as much as as what, what we cost. Is twice as much the expectation? Yeah. or more? Yeah, twice as much. That's 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 the minimum. We believe, and they believe also, that it's going to be way more. It is showing more, but but the minimum amount that they're like their their uh, um, bar is twice as much. Okay, so that's number one. That's the number one issue: is customers adopting and implementing and changing. Because in in two years, it's going to be like the smartphones. Nobody is asking now. Uh, what's the return on investment of buying a smartphone? Okay, it's just the way it's done. Okay, you, ju you just buy a smartphone. That's that's the new way to do it. We're we're gearing to be. That's the way. That's the way you collect data and analyze data. That's the way you farm. Okay, that's what we're going for. Okay, and uh, in a few years we want to be in that situation, and uh, we believe that. We're on track for that. So that's so that's that's where I lose my sleep, but I I get my optimism from seeing the reaction, seeing the conversion rate, seeing the retention, uh, getting the feedback, saying the the farmers telling us we believe in you, <laughs> using those words. Uh, that's that gives us the the, the boost forward. Okay. This is going to be the mobili of farming yep. of uh, permanent yep. crops. We're there. Thank you very much, Israel. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you everyone, all. for joining us. Thank you very much. Feel free to stay and, uh, Thank you very much. and uh, ask questions. This session is going to be uh, available as it's been 
uh, uh, videotaped. And uh, thank you again for being here, Israel.